welcome everyone to another awesome episode of Wine, Hops and Road Stops, back on location at the Beer Stop in West Hazleton. And back with me is my good friend and co-host, Alan. Alan, how you doing? I'm doing very well yourself. Yeah, Alan, I had to take a little break last week, last show. And my buddy Jay on, who's not a craft beer drinker. That was pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, hopefully he will be now. I think he is. I, I, uh, <laughs> I was actually in Atlantic City with him over the weekend uh, doing a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, we'll get to that in a little yeah. bit because that's part of our news stories. But right now, tell me what we're going to do today. Well, last year for March Madness, we did the best of the best. Yes. You tasted the IPAs, I did the stouts. Today, we're going with the worst of the worst. So we're going to f- try and figure out what the worst beer is. So this so is the worst rated this beer. Is, these are the worst rated beers on beeradvocate.com. Oh, boy. And we're going to sample these. And instead of seeing what the best one is, we're going to see if we can get to the worst of it. Not the best of the worst, the worst of the worst. Yes, the absolute worst beer. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, well, before we get to that, let's do some news because we have some good news for craft beer drinkers. Craft beer sales continue to grow. And now the amount to 24% of the total of $114 billion U.S. beer market. According to the Brewers Association, this is up 7% from last year. That's great, because about two years ago, they weren't sure what was going to be happening with Craft Market. Craft Market hit a stable area for the first time in a decade. So they weren't really sure what was going to happen. It was going to start to lose pace. Um, But I think all the craft beer markets responded with, more variety, more new beers, more seasonals, and you're inundated, inundated with so much of it, you just can't help but trying new beers. And you're seeing the, the macro breweries doing the same thing, there. Absolutely, yes. Every, everybody, everybody wants to drink what's new. They want different beers all the time. You know, particularly the 20-something generation, they're not drinking, give me my beer and I'll drink this and then done, and then tomorrow I'll drink the same thing and so on and so on. There's a lot more experimentation with beer now. There's a lot more, uh, like you said, young people trying new things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and they want to come in, they come in and say, well, what's new? And we're like, all right, here's 30 new beers today. And they're like, okay, and they pick out some and they go home and they're happy. I was in Atlantic City over the weekend and there was approximately 27,000 people at the Atlantic <laughs> City Beer Festival. That's, so that's, that's all of Hazleton. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of people from the area here, down there, yeah, especially, including us. But yeah, that, that was the estimate of 27,000 people every year coming to Atlantic City Beer yeah. Festival. Now, I actually played one of the after parties both nights of the Beer Fest at the Firewater Saloon in the Tropicana Casino with my band Ostrich Hat. Yeah. 69 taps, and yes, and there are there are beers that you can get here that are there. Yes. Because they, they, you know, it's, it's beers from all over. Correct. It's a great craft beer bar. Yeah. Half are about seasonals, half are, you know, basically your standard beers, and then you'll always have, you know, one or two, you know, surprises when you get down there. So that was my trip to Lang City. That's <laughs> what I've been doing. That's why I'm a little hoarse. <laughs> but uh, now I'm here. We're ready to sample some not so good beers. <laughs> <laughs> you see what he does to me. I come back. He's like, let's do this. Okay, well, it's gonna be a yeah, little something different. Place. All these beers are beers that sell very well. There are there's a market of people that still drink these on an everyday basis. Yeah, so it's, it's gonna go show you that yeah. you know just because it's not our thing. It's not our thing. It doesn't mean it's not yep. selling. It's, uh, yep, it's not it selling. is somebody else's. But you like what you see here? Facebook.com/slash Wine Hops and Road Stops is the best way to get in touch with us. So when we come back, we're gonna try the worst beers, the worst of the worst. Rated by Beer Advocate. <laughs> so don't go away. Well, there's more wine hops and road stuff when we return. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wine Hops and Road Stop, shot on location here at the Beer Stop in West Hadleton. And now the moment you all been waiting for <laughs> the worst beers that Alan sells, according to beeradvocate.com. Yeah, we didn't even bother masking any of the beers because I don't think we either of us have preconceived notions on how bad it's going to be. Nope. So we're just going to dive in and go head to head and see what happens. All right. This is uh, Colt 45 Double Bolt. Now you notice we're drinking about Red Solo cups too. They have to be. It has to be authentic. You've Got to drink it like Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Colt 45 Double Malt. At least it's still tasting like a beer. Yeah. Actually, I would say it's a beer. It's not. You know. Weird, funky, ugly. Okay. And that's going up against Steel Reserve. Okay. <laughs> now I gotta pick the worst one, right? Yes. Okay, the one I don't like. Correct. Actually, I kinda like the Cold 45. Definitely the Steel. Yeah. Yeah, Cold 45 is too good. Yeah, Cold 45 actually, you know, tastes more like a beer. All right, so we'll move that one ahead. This actually had a nice malty taste to it. I'm surprised. I was, uh, it was. I haven't had it since. 
Grade school? <laughs> I'm not that young. <laughs> Next is dog bite. I'm scared. Not sure. It's called dog bite. So, odd aftertaste. Well, dog bite's a big beer, though. It's eight percent. Yeah. So. But it's not an alcohol, like. <laughs> no, that's that's what's scaring me about this because dog bites actually went down pretty smooth. Yeah. And this is the Colt 45 High Gravity. Okay. So we so have this a double eight, and our high gravity. The high gravity is 8.5. So yeah. these aren't little beers. No, none of these are oh, low alcohol me. beers. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I like this. It, it's it's not horrible. It is not it, 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 I, I drink that over a Bud or a Miller. Billy D. Williams is right. Lando <laughs> is right. This stuff right. is good. So then we'll say dog bite goes ahead. Next is a big seller here, Axe Head. So this is going up against Old English. Yep. You know, yeah, that one you did get an alcohol burn on. Yeah. Oh. It's the second best gasoline I've ever drank. Oh. <laughs> That's, mm, uh, Axe Head's a little rough there. <laughs> okay, now this is going against Old E. Axe Head is worse, I think. I'm going to go. Axe Head is much worse, yes. I'm going to go with Axe Head. Yep. It's but terrible. On Beer Advocate, this is the lowest rated beer in the entire world. Oh, come on. No, there's worse than that. Yep. Old well, E. Old E was, was out of, I think they have 78,000 different beers on there. Next, Hurricane. Oh, there's not, there's not, even, there's not even a smell to it. No. Well, oh, there is, but I don't want to tell you what it smells like. <laughs> yeah, but there's like a, like a tanginess to it mm -hmm. at the end. Yeah. Now, this is something new and different. This is a hemp high gravity lager. Maybe the first beer actually brewed with hemp. And you can smell it. it smells like the hotel room in Atlantic City. It's, <laughs> it's a nasty smell. Yeah, there's a terrible smell of this. I'm taking as little sip as humanly possible. Oh, oh. Oh, you're spitting it back out. Oh, oh man. Here, give, give me some cold double. <laughs> What are you oh doing God. to me? That, that, that is oh. absolutely the worst thing ever. But it's actually, there was a little fruity or something in there. I don't know what that was. So I, I think, so we don't have to drink this again. I think we need to disqualify it. You can't, I, I, oh. Of a fruitiness. Oof. So we'll, oh. we'll, we'll go hurricane on that because I'm not, I'm not drinking that again. That was the worst. <laughs> but I don't even think you can call that a beer. <laughs> oh. I put my mouth on a lot of bad things. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Round two. Steel Reserve versus Dog Bite. Okay. Now we're getting down to the real nitty gritty. Actually, kind of similar. I'd probably go with Dog Bite myself, but I'm not married to it. Yeah, Dog Bite's worse than. It's just a little. All right. Axe Head? Okay. Axe Head versus Hurricane. Yeah, it's that still uh, has that gasoline flavor or something. Ooh, in there. gasoline flavored. <laughs> oh, things you make me do. Have to go with the Axe Head. Yeah, yeah, because Hurricane, there's not much taste to it. it no, it, it's like no. you said, it's like a Coors Light Miller like kind yeah. of taste yeah. to it. If the other one didn't get disqualified, it probably would have not moved ahead. Okay. All right. Dog bite. Last two. We're between the dog bites. Thank God. Ugh, do I have to? And how quickly we taste oh. them too. Normally yeah. we're savoring it, yeah, smelling no, it. Sniffing it, swirling it. No, I'm not savoring this at all. I got my vote. You finished it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. That's the worst. Yes. Axe Head Axe. is definitely the winner. Hooray, Axe Brewed Head. and bottled by the Minos Craft Brewery in Monroe, Wisconsin. A craft brewery. 11% alcohol. Oh, that's, well, that's where the alcohol burn is coming from. That's not The gasoline that's, 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 taste. Yes. It's the second worst gasoline I've ever had. <laughs> oh, my stomach is churning right now, man. Well. <laughs> We'll be right back for what our road stop for this episode. Going up to Wilkesbury Township to go see the nice guys at Krugel's Georgetown Deli. 
We'll be right back after these messages. Don't go away. There's more Wine Hops Road Stops when we come back. See you soon. We are back at the Georgetown Deli and Beer in Wilkesburg Township by the Big Count. I'm again with Kevin. Kevin. Welcome back, Jeff. Thank you very much for having us back. What do we have in front of us? This looks fantastic. You know, Jeff, every time you're here, we love it when you guys come. We've always got something new and exciting yeah. to show you, and this is the most exciting thing that I've got yet to debut at Georgetown. We got a smoker, and today I want to show you the brand new things that we've added to our menu. We've added smoked brisket sandwiches and smoked wings. The question with smoked meats is always, what kind of beer are you going to drink? with your smoked meats, right. right? Traditional beer etiquette says, well, dark meat equals dark beer, or heavy meat equals heavy beer. So you're gonna That's wanna have say, something yeah. like a stout or a porter, and you know, traditionally you're gonna pair the things, just like wine pairings, right? You, you sure. pair red wine with steak and white wine with chicken. But I think that in reality, most people just drink whatever they wanna drink. So what's the best right. beer to drink with, with, a, uh, with a smoked meat? I'm gonna say it's it, it's really up up to the person drinking. Really, I, I think mean, so too. Uh, everybody talks about some dark beers, so let's try some dark beers first. A couple of like wheat beers. We got a a, a wheat and a and a hefe, and then we've got a few IPAs. He's talking my language, you know me. I love the IPAs. <laughs> let's get started. Let's crack open some beers. Well. Uh, let's start off with one of the best porters that you can get. Edmund Absolutely. Fitzgerald Porter from Great Lakes Brewing out of Ohio. Yeah, it's a great So beer. the question is, is this the best beer to drink while eating smoked meat? I don't know. Well, let's, let's give it a shot. Yeah, let's give it a shot. You got a little bit of a caramel in the background, mm -hmm. right? The roasty up front, the coffee sort of background. You could even call it a little chocolate. Does that, does that pair with the smoke the best? For me, it does. For yeah. me, absolutely. For me, if I was going to eat meat, brisket, steak, anything like that, I'd probably go with something You'd like You'd probably this. go with the porter. And I think yeah. that that's what traditional uh, beer etiquette mm -hmm. is going to say. But I, I think there's more. So next, we're looking at Hofbrau Dunkel. Hofbrau Dunkel is brewed by uh, Hofbrau's Munchen out of Germany. That was some good German. <laughs> Close enough. And dunkel means what? And dunkel means dark. So we're looking at a, a dark, dark beer, toastier malts, uh, like like dark toasted bread versus light toasted bread, right? You can get that sweetness in the background. It ends on a sweet note. I kind of like that. Uh, if, if I was going to pick one, though, I would go with this one for the wings. This one for the wings, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. A little bit of a lighter meat on the wings, mm -hmm. right? We've got a dark meat and we've got a, a, a white meat here. So you're, you're, you're going for the dunkel on the wings. That's what I say. That sounds fantastic. All right. And now in front of us, we have the lighter side of things. Right. So let's go on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, why not? not everybody likes a black beer. I can't imagine why, but not everybody likes a black beer. So Allagash White is what we'll start with. It's a classic Belgian wheat, and you can think kind of like a blue moon. Sure. Uh, I like to say a blue moon with more flavor to mm -hmm. it, right? So this one... With the smoke pairing on this, you're going to have a lighter mouth feel, and I, I think it's going to, I, I think it's going to prepare your mouth for another bite of the of the brisket better. And I kind of like the light feel to it. I mean, I feel the the brisket is is classically heavy. It's such a big bite of meat that uh, you know. So this will I, contrast it nicely. I think the con I like the contrast. I really like the contrast okay. of a wheat beer. So let's look at the other kind of a wheat beer, a hefe. This one is from Evil Genius Brewery. Now, a lot of people don't know that Evil Genius is actually a local beer. I didn't know that until now. Yeah, they were gypsy brewers for a while. They, they contracted out, and this beer is specifically made in Pittston. It says it right on the label. Right up the road. So this one's a pineapple hefe. Okay. Get a little bit of the spicy and the pineapple. And I think the fruity and the meat are going to go well together as well. People at home, when you're trying brisket or you get smoked wings or you get heavy meats like this, don't just go to the dark beers. You could go to the lighter sure. beers too. Absolutely. So, what do you think on the wings too? Is it the same story with the wings? Is this gonna is this gonna pair with the chicken even better? I think so. With the yeah. with the pineapple on there, I think it's gonna pair with the chicken you know, a lot. We, we, we were you know we were talking before about Evil Genius, and, and I've said I, I've said many times about Evil Genius beers. I feel like they use a very restrained hand in the way they make their beers. You yeah. know, I think that there's a lot of times when when Evil Genius can be 
you know, you'd expect the beer to just go all out in a certain way, like the pineapple, right? right? They could have gone crazy on the pineapple. Oh, sure. But they didn't. The pineapple is right in the middle with every other flavor, and all together it, it adds up. I, I like that. They like to experiment. Yes. They, they push the envelope a, lot of a little bit, but they do hold back, and it, it makes for a really good beer. Last batch of beers, we're heading on over to the IPAs. This is my style. This yeah. is what I like. I'm big IPA fan. Like anyone who watches the show knows I'm a big hop head. Once so, you become a hop head, that's it. That, that's it. <laughs> so what do we have in front of us? T today we've got three of the best IPAs that I can pull out of this store. So we've got, uh, we've got Tiki from Peak Brewing. Uh, they call this one a Mai Tai PA. Okay. This is a really fun combination. You got pineapple, mango, citra hops, a uh, bit of a tangerine and orange peel. And then on the back end, there's some coconut. There's a big nose on this. Yeah, it comes at you. Yeah, and it's a double IPA. Yeah. Well, sure. So yeah. 8%, but when, you're, when I'm drinking it, I do not taste 8%. What I noticed is it's really light in yeah. color. This here's 8%, and, and that looks like... Uh, that this looks, like, looks like a regular IPA, yeah. Right, sure. Yeah. So, you know, be careful, you know, because uh, this will knock you for a loop. I think that IPA and smoke goes together yes. because the flower is strong and mm -hmm. you're left with the flowery just like you're left with the smoky, right? Mm -hmm. And so you've got these, you got these two powerful flavors that are kind of not fighting with each other, but they're, I, I really think that an IPA is one of the best things you can have with smoked meat. Next up is the Oracle from Bell's out of uh, Michigan. It's resinous, it's citrusy. For the brisket, I'd have to pick the Oracle. For the smoked wings, though, I'd have to go with this. This one I think would go better with chicken. You think that one's going to go lighter with chicken? I can see where you're at on that. I, I totally see where. Because uh, because of the the, the a little bit of a fruitiness yeah, to it. Yep, yeah. Yep. I hear you on that. Beer Advocate rates this really highly. Both of these beers get exceptional ratings. Way out, way over four, uh, four out of five on these. I, I like this. This is a great beer. The last IPA that we're going to taste for for today. I'm personally very excited about this one. I've seen this on the shelf. The Free Will guys came in here, they brought this beer in, and since we brought it in, I've been, I've been dying to try he's this been, He's been waiting for the show to try it, too. <laughs> I have been. <laughs> what is it? So this is Free Will Brewing Safe Word. It is an Imperial Habanero Mango IPA. Safe Word. You got the Imperial, you got the Mango, and you got the Spice. Ooh. Personally, I think this might be the best. All right, let's I try think. it. Yeah, let's try it. Let's, let's see go. how it goes. Let's go for it. I've heard it's very spicy. Oh, you can almost you can smell it a little bit in the nose. A little bit, you get the IPA stuff right away. Mm -hmm. Oh, whoa. Oh, the spicy's wow. there. <laughs> it's spicy. Wow. It is definitely spicy. I did not expect it. Yeah, yeah, that's spicy. But it's good. A little it's bit not, sweet. It's, it's not just heat. There's it's flavor. Keeping, the spice is keeping coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's flavor to it, too. <laughs> it's very nice. This is probably the spiciest beer I've ever had. I've had a lot of chili beers, but this ain't Damn. a chili beer. This is a habanero beer. a great beer. Wow. <laughs> now, definitely this would have to probably be a one and done for me. Yeah. I don't know if I'd be able to drink this all night. Well, it is a 10.4% 10 10 beer. Nah, I couldn't drink it all night. <laughs> so it's, you but, know. Wow, man, that is good. I yeah. heard it tastes good with chili. The free will, When the free will guys were in here, they said, make, make chili out of this beer. There's so many different kinds of beer. The classical beer pairings, it, it, that's kind of old school, I guess. With yeah. new beers like habanero mango beer, I mean, this is a, th th this is a whole new game here yeah, with these sure. kind of beers. Like you said, it, it, the, the old school stuff goes out the window because I'd have, I'd have one of these with an order wings. Yeah. I'd probably have... Would you have this with hot wings? Yeah, yeah, yeah I would. You'd, but you'd, I, you know what, though? I'd you'd have, put hot on hot? I'd have one of these right beside me. you go for me, a tea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right beside <laughs> me, though. Yeah, I, I would. Uh, my Irish is sweating a little bit. <laughs> My Italian is sweating a little bit. It's, it's, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, thank you for having us. Thank you for showing us your new food. And I got to give a shout out to Nimble Hill because they brew this for you. Tell me a little bit about this beer I've been sipping on the entire segment here. We got to give a big shout out to Gary and Mike over at Nimble Hill. We love this beer so much. The Coco Nina is 
and everybody loves it. This one's a six and a half percent chocolate milk stout with coconut almond in it. Mm. It tastes like your favorite candy bar. Thank you again though for having us. Jeff, I wish we had so I wish we had more time. I've got so much more to show you. We've got another episode coming. Yeah, absolutely. And believe me, I've got a million things that we're gonna we're gonna throw at you. <laughs> hey man, I can't wait. You don't have a beer in your hand though, so put that beer in your hand. Salute. Slancha. Welcome back to the last segment of Wine Hops and Road Stops on location, of course at the beer stop in West Hazleton. And since Alan made me drink all these horrible beers, <laughs> we're gonna talk about a new style of IPA that came out recently, the Brute IPA. I don't know anything about this. More or less, they're kind of making beer like, beer -like champagne. That's kind of where the Brute comes from. They're supposed to be dry, crisp, clean. Okay. And I assume with the hoppiness, a little bit of that. So we're so gonna we try- got two styles to try. we we'll try a couple of them. Okay, yeah. great. Well, what's the first one here? First one is Sierra Nevada's. I would, I would not call that an IPA under, under, I mean, it's, you're not getting that bite at the end. No. You're getting the citrus out of it. Yeah. But I see the dryness of it as well. Yeah, it is, has a real dry finish, like a like champagne mm -hmm. wood. Mm, I just like it. Not bad though. No. Not no, bad. No, no, good. And the other and one? next is the New Belgium. Okay. Same style brewed IPA. Well, that's a, that's a thing. I don't like, I really don't like champagne because mm -hmm. it smells like cheese or feet and whatever. It just, I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> this has a kind of a nose similar to that, May, or maybe it's just, you know, in, in my head. Brain, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like everybody when they get sick on tequila. And then right. They can't drink tequila <laughs> forever tequila and ever. Anymore. Mexican beer starts smelling like tequila. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the, the taste of the mouth, the mouth feels it's real dry. Mm -hmm. like crisp, like short finish to it. It's not bad, though. It's, it's, it's kind of an IPA for non-IPA people. Because you don't get that bite at the end. But it's more, I would call it more a pale ale than an IPA. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think they're only using IPA because then they can say, well, that's the number one style that Americans are buying, yeah. so hopefully people will drink it. This is a nice style if you don't like overly hoppy beers, yeah. but you still want a little bit of that, that dry finish at the end, I guess. Or if you're looking to try your first IPA. There you go. Good, good yeah. entryway into them. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, kind absolutely. of in that in between styles. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, so let's talk about what else is new at the beer stop this week. It's springtime, summertime's around the corner. It's fruit beer season. This year, the microbrew guys are grapefruit IPAs, you know, pale ales, wheats, whites, everything. Grapefruit, lemonade, peach. So you've seen yeah, a, lot mean, of, a lot of uh, tons and tons fruit of being fruit. mixed in there. Correct, it used to be just the fruit beer. Like if you had like, you know, your Sam Adams cherry. Cherry wheat you know, or something like that. Yes, yeah. you know, purple haze, raspberry ale, mm. and that was it. Now they're all mixing the styles. Let's talk, let's talk about what else you have here. Can you have more than just beer? Yes, well, we do sell wine occasionally. I'm not a big wine guy ourselves. That's why we've never tried wine on here. I'm right. much more a beer guy. Uh, but it, again, it's summertime. We got 10 different flavors of slushy alcohol. And those always go huge in the summertime. If everybody loves it, they come down, it's like a kid at the store. A little of this, a little of this, a little of this. You can have rainbow colored ones and mix and match and whatnot. Love and uh, they love it and drink it all day long in the summertime. Great for the hot weather. All right, my friend, thank you very much. Hey, life is too short to have bad beer. So have a good beer and get it from the beer stop. See you next time on Wine Hops and Road Stops. Cheers. I mean, I've had squirt fried scorpion. And yeah. that was, you know, way worse.